in Doha, Qatar for the first of two events in the 2013 UIM Nations Cup. What better venue could there be than Doha? This booming Middle Eastern city with its iconic skyscraper studded skyline, extraordinary architecture, and elegant mix of modernity and tradition, cosmopolitanism and heritage has ambitions far surpassing almost any other. Doha has hosted such events as the Asian Games and is gearing up to host the 2022 FIFA World Cup. Qatar is a country and culture that has its roots in the desert, which still has an important place in the Qatari way of life. But it's the water that truly defines Qatar. Qatar proclaims itself as the world capital of marine motorsports, and rightly so. The last two weeks saw a bevy of world championship powerboat racing over a host of series, including the Aquabike, F1 H2O, F4, and the Nations Cup Grand Prix, with Qatari teams and racers competing in all events. With Team Qatar, it's a challenging weekend here at this race at the Cornish here because we are running Formula 4, Formula 1, and the Nations Cup. We have our Formula 4 drivers in the Nations Cup boat running back to back. Uh, we have a, a more of a seasoned veteran in one, and then we have uh, Mohammed, who is a brand new driver, first time in a boat, was free practice in Nations Cup a couple of days ago, doing really well. UIM Nations Cup began in 2011, and this year's Qatar Grand Prix is the third Nations Cup event so far, with another Nations Cup to be run this year in Abu Dhabi. The Qatar Grand Prix was organized by the Qatar Marine Sports Federation, led by Sheikh Hassan bin Jabr Al Thani, an accomplished powerboat racer himself. The Nations Cup is a fantastic new concept to promote powerboat racing, and an event where young talent can shine. With Nations Cup, what you have is basically you have many nations that are interested in catamaran tunnel boat racing uh, or may do it themselves. And you have drivers that are not Formula One quality yet, but maybe Formula Two, Formula Four, or even kneeler boats. Uh, and they're all coming together trying to vie for who's best in the, in the world at the moment. The great thing about Nations Cup is these guys that all race locally in their country can come compete on a world stage. Um, and I think that's just great, period. They get to see us race Formula One. Um, and conversely, our teams get to see drivers that we might not get to see before. And um, if someone's really talented, uber talented, and you never know, they might get a shot in Formula One. So that's, you know, that's good for the sport. It's also good for the sport to mix all these different people together. The more people that we bring in, the better. So that's what we're looking for. It's a similar style boat, obviously, the catamaran style boat. A little bit less power, but it helps you very well to learn for the Formula One because it's underpowered, so you have to be very smooth in the boat compared to the Formula One to where you, ha you can have horsepower to make up for your mistakes. They all have the same boat, all the same engines, same propeller, so, uh, so obviously it, it's up to the drivers. The Nations Cup boat obviously has less power, we know that, but it's, it's a little bit more generic. It's, it's, a Formula One boat is very reliant on the boat as well, but a Nations Cup boat, is they're all basically the same. Um, and these guys got to come out and compete. It's, it's based on driver's talent. Propellers are the same, everything's the same. So it's a much less technical version of what we race, but at the same time it highlights what a driver can do and can't do, um, which is really what you're, what you're looking for when you're trying to find someone from Formula One or if there's someone that might have some talent to move up to Formula One in the future. The last two UIM Nations Cup events drew big crowds and plenty of national teams from all over the world. So far, the Nations Cup has been all about the rivalry between two teams, UAE and Qatar. The first ever Nations Cup in Singapore had a spectacular Singaporean skyline backdrop. UAE driver Ahmed Al Hamali won the match race and then he won the Grand Prix race ahead of Khalid Al Shamlan and Khalid Al Kawari of Qatar with UAE pilot Majid Al Mansouri fourth. Team UAE just beating Qatar for the Nations Cup title with Team South Africa third. In the second Nations Cup in Khan last year, Al Mansouri won both the match race and the Grand Prix for <laughs> UAE, 
which once again beat runners-up Team Qatar with Team Finland finishing third. Qatar Grand Prix features 12 drivers from six countries. This year, Khalid al Kuwari is back again and leading out Team Qatar alongside debutant Mohamed al Obaidli. But now Qatar is racing in home waters with local support behind them. Can they win it this time? The competition is once again fierce. Team UAE features two up and coming young talents. Rashid Al Kemzi and Mohamed Al Maherbi, both of whom have competed in the F4S Eurofin Trophy. The Middle Eastern field is further bolstered by Team Saudi Arabia, with Naeem Al Kadawi and Saud Hamad, along with Team Lebanon, featuring Lebo Shagouri, who raced for Team Brazil in the first two Nations Cups. But Middle Eastern might will be challenged by a strong European presence, Team Russia. There are four pilots and two boats for Team Russia, with Andrei Panyushkin and Mikhail Kitashev in boat number five, while brothers Roman and Dmitry Vandeshev share racing duties in boat number six. But the dark horse this year could be Team Norway, which features two young and aggressive pilots. Stan Slattendalen and Christian Carlson. The Qatar Grand Prix is comprised of two 20-minute sprint races that will be run on a four-turn, anti-clockwise, 1.5-kilometer circuit with two 500-meter straights and a 435-meter starting straight to boy number one. The all-important morning time trials to decide the starting lineup for the match race saw a titanic struggle between the defending Nations Cup champions Team UAE and newcomers to the series Team Norway. Mohamed Al Maherbi set what proved to be the fastest time, 45.05 seconds early in the one-hour session, but his time came under pressure in the latter stages as both his teammate Rashid al Kemzi and the Norwegians Stan Slattedalen and Christian Carlsen edged ever closer to it. The Norwegians traded places throughout the session, Slattedalen holding the advantage in second spot just four hundredths of a second off the leader with ten minutes to go. Carlson held third with 45.45 seconds ahead of Al Kemzi. With less than five minutes on the clock, Al Kemzi jumped Carlson, posting his best time, 45.28 seconds. Both the Norwegians went again, Carlson overcooking it and Bauer rolling on turn four. The yellow flag coming out just as Slot the Dalen went quickest with a blistering 44.82 second lap. Unfortunately for the young Norwegian, his time was discounted. Team Lebanon's Lebos Chiguri had a strong final quarter moving up from outside the top 10 to set the fifth fastest time, 45.77 seconds, with Andrei Panyushkin outpacing his teammate Roman Vandeshev to finish in the top six. So pole position went to Team UAE's Al Maherbi. Slatan Dalin second on the starting grid. Third place going to Rashid Al Kamsi. Well, I'm happy with this setup. I'm lucky with it. I feel better than uh, I tried last year this boat and uh, Abu Dhabi. But this year I try it now. I'm very happy, confident. So hopefully we'll get a good uh, scoring. Two boats.
Worlds line up against each other for the best of three runs on a two-pin alternate course. Khalid al Kuwari beat his Qatari teammate Muhammad al Abidli in the first round, followed by Muhammad al Maherbi of the UAE in the quarterfinals, and then Lebos Chaguri in a close fought semi final. Kawari's rival in the final would be Team Russia's Andrei Panushkin. He eased past Team Norway's Stjan Slatendalen after the gung-ho Norwegian crashed out on the first leg of their quarter-final, capping a disastrous day for Team Norway following Carlsen's crash in the time trials. Go in the turn and, uh, and got a little wave uh, in the side and just rolled around. So uh, it was uh, very fast, but I'm okay and hope the boat is okay. Uh, we have two talented and aggressive drivers from Norway that had a, had a bad day today. They were very fast in qualifying, and, uh, but unluckily and uh, maybe a bit too aggressive and, uh, and they both rolled out. But, uh, but it's a great experience for them and I'm sure they will do well in Abu Dhabi. Final of the match race, Khalid Al Kuwari went up against Andre Panushkin. Kuwari went to the near boy first, Panushkin to the far boy. The two went head to head on the last straight there in the second heat, but Khalid Al Kuwari pulls away for the win, defeating Panushkin convincingly over two heats. Al Kuwari taking the maximum 25 points for Qatar team. Celebrations for Qatar team as Al Kuwari wins the match race. Panushkin runner up, Chaguri third. It was an eventful day for the Norwegians. Due to the crash damage suffered in their first outings, the Norwegian team had to build a single boat out of two. With the number eight engine being mounted on the number seven hull, Slatendalen and Carlsen to share race duties in the number seven Team Norway boat. Yesterday, uh, both the Norwegian boats uh, crashed out, one in the uh, match race and one in the qualification. The problem we have now is uh, one boat is, is, um, is broken and the other um, engine on the other boat is, is broken. So what I'm trying to do is um, put the good engine on the good boat and um, hopefully we can get them out there for the, uh, the racing today. The boat was ready just in time for sprint race one. So the season's First Nations Cup race gets underway. Six nations, ten boats, two 20-minute sprint races. The crowds fill the shores of Doha Bay on a beautiful late afternoon with thousands rooting for their home team. Emirati Al Maherbi had pole with his teammate Al Kamzi starting second, followed by Chaguri and the Russian boats. The lights go out, the First Nations Cup Sprint Race is on. Al Maherbi in pole pulls away into the lead. His teammate Al Kamzi and Qatari Mohammed Al Abidli in number 12 trying to keep up with Al Maherbi. Al Maherbi leads early, but just look at the pace on Al Kamzi. The two Emiratis are in charge here, and it looks like their biggest rivals for this race will be each other. Meanwhile, Christian Carlsen had some good speed on him as he overtook one of the Russian boats and then... Oh. ...set 
his sights on Lebos Chaguri of Lebanon. Rashid al Kamzi coming up on Al Meherbi's starboard side down that 255 meter stretch between Blois 1 and 2. Smooth move from Rashid al Kamzi as he overtakes Al Meherbi right on that number two turn. And the two then sprint off down that 500 meter straight away to turn number three. And behind them is Al Kawari and Al Obaidli, followed by Lebos Chaguri of Lebanon, trying to make some headway to see if he can't make his way up the field. Another battle between teammates unfolds in the back as Team Russia's Mikhail Kitashev in boat number five passes Dimitri Vandashev in boat number six. In seventh position, Kitashev then takes on the young Norwegian Christian Carlsen. But Carlsen fends off the Russian challenge with a tight turn and some clean, consistent driving. But Mikhail Kitashev doesn't back down, keeping up the pressure on Carlsen, trying to see if he can't find a little gap in which to find his chance to pounce. Terrible news for Qatar team as number 12 Mohamed al Baidli's boat breaks down in lap four. That's going to hurt their chances. But at least al Baidli's teammate Khaled al Kawari is hightailing it in third position here behind the UAE boats as the experienced Nations Cup driver laps the Saudi backmarkers. The Saudi boats seem to be playing a safe strategy, knowing that the points allocation in the Nations Cup greatly favors a strong overall team showing and a two-boat finish. In lap five, Carlson in fifth position, still trying to hold off Kitashev in boat number five. Kitashev moves real close, coming around turn number one, and on turn number two, he sees his chance and takes the Norwegian on that 500 meters straight away. Good move from Kitashev, who moves himself up into fifth position. But now Carlson has to worry about the second Russian boat as Dmitry Vandashev in boat number six starts gaining on Carlson. In the lead, it's a masterful race so far from Rashid al Kamzi, driving with the confidence of a seasoned veteran as he guards his lead against his teammate Mohamed al Meherbi. But Meherbi clips his boat on those roughening conditions and he barrel rolls out of the race. A spectacular and disappointing end to his First Nations Cup outing as a yellow flag goes up and the rescue team is on the scene. The young driver was fine and unhurt as the remaining boats motored around in their race positions. Green flag, the race is restarted as the boats thunder away with Al Kamzi leading ahead of Al Kawari of Qatar now in second position. Lebos Chaguri is third, then the two Russians, Kitashev and Dmitry Vandashev, followed by the two Saudi Arabian boats bringing up the rear. Chaguri, who was third in the match race, also going third here. Chaguri loses control of his boat, unable to keep it down. He goes flying and lands belly up. That's a shame for Chaguri, the dual citizen Lebanese-Brazilian pilot in his second crash in three Nations Cup outings. That would be another yellow flag as the rescue boat attends to Chiguri. There it is on the replay. Chiguri flies off the water. Thankfully, he was unhurt and his boat was towed off the course. There was no time left to restart the race, which would end under a yellow flag. Rashid Al-Kamzi, the winner for UAE. Khaled Al-Khwari runner-up, Mikhail Kitashev finishing third. But a double boat finish for both Team Russia and Team Saudi Arabia would give them the advantage. <laughs> On to sprint race two with Chaguri and Almaherbi crashing out in race one. Only seven boats would compete in race two. Problems right from the... Oh! Get-go from...
for Team Russia as number five falters. Leading on the 450 meter starting straight is Khalid Al Kawari, who edged ahead of race one winner Rashid Al Kamzi. Although Al Kawari had the lead, Al Kamzi used the inside lane to his advantage, getting in tight on the commitment boy to overtake the Qatari and get back where he left off in race one at the head of the field. Roman Vandeshev in Russian boat number six is right on Kuwari's tail. Muhammad al Bidley barrel rolls. The Qatari number 12 is out of the race, leaving Kuwari to go it alone for the rest of the race. There it is again on the replay. al Bidley losing control on that tricky corner and he goes into a double barrel roll. Fortunately, he's unhurt in this, the third crash of the afternoon. That leaves just six boats now motoring around the course under a yellow flag. UIM Race Commissioner Luis Ribeiro restarts the race. Rashid al he picks up where he left off, sipping around those corners. But Khalid al Kuwari is right up there with him as yet another classic UAE Qatar showdown unfolds. Behind the two Middle Easterners, a battle rages between the Russian and Norwegian boats with Stian Slatendalen setting his sights on Roman Vandeshev in third, followed by Saud Hamad in fifth and Naim al Kadawi in sixth. al Kamzi is fast as he opens his lead over his former fellow F4S Eurofin Trophy competitor Khalid al Khawari. In third is Roman Vandeshev, a former two-time Russian champion from Moscow. Slatin Dalin in fourth is catching up with Vandeshev as the gung-ho Norwegian sticks to his usual style. Go hard or go home. Slatin Dalin and Vandeshev are neck and neck going into turn number two and Slatin Dalin has it. Vandeshev nearly loses control on that straight that has already claimed Chaguri, but the Russian holds on and pursues the Norwegian. Behind them, the Saudi pilots stick to their game plan, knowing that a consistent showing can earn them the points they need now to capitalize on the other team's incidents and accidents, which will surely now earn them a podium place. Having overtaken the Russian, Slatin Dalin now wants to bite off an even bigger chunk as he takes on Khalid al Kuwari in second position. The Norwegian hightails it up to turn number four, staying on the outside, using the space well in a reduced field. He nips and tucks, getting on the inside of the Qatari now as the two go head to head in that 500 meter drag race to turn three. It looks like Slatan Dalin might have it. He does. The young Norwegian is sensational as he outpaces Al Kuwari and moves up into second position on lap 12. In fourth place behind Al Kuwari, Roman Vandeshev trying to stay in touch with a leading triumvirate. Behind the Russian, accomplished jet skier and Saudi national championship pilot Saud Hamad leads his fellow Saudi, Naeem al Kadawi. Zlatan Dalin has race talent that belies his years with lots of experience in Norwegian V25, F4S and V60 series. Behind him, Vandeshev keeps up his pursuit of Khalid al Kuwari. With one boat down, the Russians need all the points they can get. The clock winds down, Vandeshev moves off on Khalid al Kuwari as the Russian goes neck and neck with the Qatari on the straight to turn two. But the Qatari pilot keeps his nerves and says no more. He'll be holding tenaciously on to that third place. The battle continues up ahead as well as Rashid al Kamzi tries to stave off the Norwegian onslaught. But Slatin Dalin gives it everything he has as his teammate Christian Carlsen, who ran in race one, looks on. It's becoming a war of attrition now. Time must be passing very slowly for Al Kamzi, but ticking away like a blur for Slatin Dalin, who maintains his relentless pursuit of the race leader, lapping the Saudi boats once again on the 1500 meter circuit. <laughs> In the final
final stretch is now. Rash it out comes. He successfully holds off Slotin Dolan as he heads to the finish line, capping off a perfect two race winning performance. But Slotendalen was no less impressive, rising up the field with some brave and fearless driving to take a well-deserved runner-up finish ahead of Khalid al Kuwari, Hamad and al Qadawi getting valuable double boat points. Rashid al Kamzi picks up the Sprint Race Trophy. Dalin and Al Kuwari on the podium for Sprint Race 2 with Al Kamzi once again the winner. All right, thank you very much. But it would be Team Russia that wins the Qatar Grand Prix with Saudi Arabia runners up and UAE third. Qatar team only manages fourth at home, followed by Team Norway, who can have a shot at the title in Abu Dhabi if they can rein themselves in a bit. That concludes the UIM Nations Cup Grand Prix of Qatar. See you in Abu Dhabi for the final round of the 2013 season.